Hello, thanks for joining me again. Uh, this week's Stillwater Patterns, a little concoction of my own. It's uh, very loosely based on a cruncher. And in the vise you see a Hanak H200 barbless hook. And it's at size 10. The thread we're going to be using today is the UTC. And this is the 70 in black. First thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of wax to my thread. Just to give me a bit of purchase. And I can cast that on a millimetre or so in behind the eye. And I'll use the rat's tail just to help me get a bit of thread down. I want to come approximately to where the barb would be on the hook. Then I'll take away my spare thread. And I'll just come another couple of turns. Now, the tail of this fly, I'm going to use just a, a cheap cock hackle feather. And I've already taken a little bit off of this strand. So I'm just going to use the same feather. Simply come in near the top, because that's where the best colour is. And take five or six strands. Rip them away. And then what I'll do is transfer them. Once I've got my fibres, I've transferred them over to my right hand and I want it to be about two thirds of the length of the shank of the hook. So I'm going to lay that on. That looks okay. I'm going to catch it on with my left hand again and then just get a couple of wraps to hold that into place. I'm going to come all the way up. Um, because I want to maintain the same sort of width so that's why I've left the tail ends on and then just at the end here I'm going to tidy that up excuse the fingers get that out of the way and then I can cover up my ends here I'll bring it back down I'm going to twist my thread anti-clockwise to open it out try and keep it nice and smooth back down to the bottom now when I get to the bottom I'm just going to come round the bend of the hook and bring it up to help splay out my tail feathers there as you can see so I've just put a wrap of thread underneath and it's just to spray them tail fibers out slightly next thing I want to do is I'm going to add in some red holographic or prismatic tinsel as this is called it's basically red holographic and it's a medium tinsel so I'm going to catch that in next just one or two turns just to hold it into place because there's a lot more going in here now next I'm going to add some pearl tinsel medium this is the UTC ice blue And I'm going to catch that in with just one or two turns, just to hold it into place. What I'm trying to do is keep my bulk at this back end to a minimum. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a strip of peacock strip, peacock quill. Uh, I'm using the hand selected trout line stuff. And I've already selected a feather from the packet. And... The reason I use this, I mean, they're a little bit more expensive than buying it in bulk or stripping it yourself. But what you get is a really nice banding on the peacock herald. And that's, that's what I want for this fly. So I'm going to also catch that in with one or two turns. Now that I've got all my ingredients tied in at the butt, I'm going to bring my thread all the way back up to the top here and what I want to do is just flatten it out again if it starts twisting up on you flatten it out uh, and want to build a small taper into the fly so you'll notice I'm just spinning my bobbin to get that thread flattened
and I'm fairly happy with that. I can worry more about the thorax when I come to that part. So what I want to do now is just bring my thread down to around the middle of the body of the fly. And the first ingredient to come up is the red holographic. So I'll just pick that out from the polythrea ingredients I've got in here. Excuse my fingers while I get everything else out of the way. I'm going to catch that in. Tie it in quite firmly. Remember, we want to try and reduce the bulk at this tail end. So the tighter you can pull this over, the better really. But beware of catching the point of your hook. Because if it takes a little nick, it will just snap off on you. So I've caught that in to where I want to be. And I've just got one wrap in, keeping the thread under tension. I can then put two or three wraps in just to hold that into place. Come in with my snips and remove the excess of the red holographic. Now, before I do anything else, I just want to tidy up this area here. And of course, while I'm doing that, I can just increase my taper by putting a few more thread wraps in. I want it quite thick up at my thorax end. Okay, that's looking not too bad. Now, a little tip. Um, I'm going to be bringing the, pe the strip peacock quill up next. And what I always like to do, just to help me with this, is add a little layer of super glue onto the, the body. Now, this helps in several different ways. Not least if your hackle pliers let you down, um, there's a good chance that the super glue will hold, hold your fibre in place. So I've taken hold off my strip peacock quill now and I've got a grip of that with my hackle pliers. Now you need to be quite careful at this point because you don't want to snip your peacock quill. Uh, there's already quite a bit of work gone in and this is the bit where it can all go really wrong really quick. So just take your time, bring that up through the red and you're onto your black. Nice open turns, whoops, just dropped that there, and luckily survived it, all the way up to the thorax area, then once you've got your thread over the top, just make sure you've got your thread under tension, and that should just snip away for you. So it's all going well so far. Um, now there's a, enough super glue left here in between the strip quill for me to bring my ice blue through it now and this will the super glue will hold this in place. If you choose not to use super glue you can of course once you've brought this ribbon over give it a very thin coat of UV resin and that will do the same job. If you just bear with me while I bring this up. It gives a really nice effect, um, especially over black and red. I find when you bring this up as a secondary rib, you get, you get um, a lovely effect with it. I'm not too worried. Some slipped off the thorax there, but I've got a bit of work to do there, so I'm not overly concerned with that. Bring that up out of the way, and I can just 
fuck that three. Now what this does is it serves two jobs. It adds that extra bit effect to the fly. Uh, it gives a, a 3D impression when it's wet and it protects the stripped quill rib. So next, I'm going to take a strand off Peacock Eye. Now this is dyed orange, you'll probably see it better from the reverse side. And all I want to do is take a strand, one strand off the eye. Now, what I want from this is the thick end. So I'll grab that and I'm going to tie that in at the thick end. I'm going to come back about two eighths of an inch from the eye of the hook and I've got it tied there on my side and I'm going to lock that down with my thread bringing it all the way to the front. Again, the the peacock eye is a fairly vulnerable material, so I'm going to just give the thorax area a little tiny, the tiniest coats of super glue. And then I can wind on my thorax. Now, firstly, I'm going to bring it absolutely on top of itself so that gives me a nice start to the thorax and I'm going to bring it all the way around in touch and turns to the front of the hook and once I've caught that I can give it two, two or three turns and that just snips away really easily. Okay, so far so good. Uh, for the hackle at the front, I am going to use some uh, badger cape. This has been dyed picric. It uh, gives it a yellowy colour. I've already selected a feather for uh, quickness. What I'm looking for from this feather is it to be just slightly over the length of the the body of the fly so show the show the fibers up that looks good and i'm just going to trim it now so i've got a little bit at the end to catch in and of course before before you catch in your hackle always best to add a little bit of wax just for traction and then dress up your hackle and catch that in two or three turns and I've misplaced my hackle pliers there they are then catch that in on the end and I want two turns out of this feather so the first one can be the hardest one because it won't want to sit properly for you half the time so that's one now once you've got it in this position, just help tease out the, fi the fibres from the feather and two. Again, just rubbing our fingers over the hackle just to help tease it out. Once I've caught that feather in, I can give it a couple of turns to secure it. And often at this point, it'll just snap away by itself with the weight of the hackle pliers but this has been a bit resilient unusually so I'm going to grab everything I've licked my thumb and forefinger bring it all behind and make a little start to your head then this feather can then be pulled forward and just disconnected from the fly itself now what I would normally do is I'd finish this fly, I'd build the head and I'd put a little bit of super glue and I'd run a feather through to clear the eye. And But then I would soak it under a tap to get these fibres just to dress back for me. But today, so I can just lick my thumb and forefinger and do this immediately, I'm going to finish it with a bit of UV varnish.
for a UV resin. So I'll just call that in. Everything back out the way. Bring it in at the start there. A little half hitch. And I can come in with my UV torch then. Just to cure off the head. Make sure it's cured and then just takes the tiniest touch with your scissors to remove the thread. Lick my thumb and forefinger and just help these fibers dress back. And like I say, what I do now is I would get this on a fly clip and run it under a tap and that just brings all the feathers back and I would then leave it on the fly clip until it's dried and you end up with the image you see in the photograph actually is, is how um, I get the hackle to, to sit right for me while I'm I'm taking photographs. I hope that's of some use to you. It's a great little fly. I know it's a lot of effort but um, when I'm fishing it I feel really confident because uh, it just looks right. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.